ये मनगरन दुश्मन आप पैदा करके अपना खामिया को अब छुपाने का कोशिश कर रहे हैं आप युवाओं का अरेस्ट कर रहे हैं परपेचुअली आप युवाओं से युद्ध कर रहे हैं बीते सात वर्षों से किसानों से युद्ध कर रहे हैं मजदूरों से युद्ध कर रहे हैं किसके हैं आप कई ऐसी भारत विरोध ताकतें हैं जो देश में इनस्टेबिलिटी लाना चाहते हैं इट इज वेरी सरप्राइजिंग दैट फॉर द ऑपोजिशन टूडे हु डू नॉट एंजॉय द सपोर्ट ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री फॉर देम दिशा रवि इज अ वेरी इनोसेंट पनीर ईटिंग ट्वेंटी वन ईयर ओल्ड एनिमल लवर एनवायरमेंटल You're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. The investigation expands into the protest toolkit disseminated on the internet, geared to instigate violence with an aim at the farmers' protests. The Delhi police's eyes are on three individuals: Disha Ravi, Nikita Jacob, and Shantanu Muluk, who have been charged with sedition and conspiracy. Who they claim are the creators and editors of the protest toolkit, and were in contact with the head. of the poetic justice foundation a pro khalistani group which has taken a stand against the indian state over the farmer protests the police also say a whatsapp chat group was created to spread the toolkit while disha ravi sent it to greta thunberg via telegram and then went on to delete the whatsapp group disha ravi also had a chat with greta thunberg where she says she could be booked under uapa for her actions so that is the case with the delhi police disha maintains she only edited two lines of the google document and has no links whatsoever to any khalistani group while the high court has granted transit bail to shantanu muluk and the order on nikita Jacob's anticipatory bail plea will come on Wednesday. Nikita's lawyer has said she worked on the toolkit to show support for the protesting farmers. The lawyer also confirmed she attended the Zoom call with the Poetic Justice Foundation. There is a stark divide now in the legal community when it comes to the strength of the Delhi police's case, namely over the protest toolkit and if that really merits the charge of sedition. Questions are being raised if the document is truly aimed to wage war against the state as opposed to what the suspects claim. Simply show solidarity with the farmers that's what the three are claiming. How watertight is the Delhi police's case against these three individuals? Did they knowingly intend to spark violence in the national capital on the Republic Day? are they truly anti india plotters as the delhi police is alleging or are they campaigners caught in a political crossfire let me bring in my guests now vikram singh former up dgp sanjay hegre senior advocate nupur sharma spokesperson of the bjp shama mohammed spokesperson of the congress we are also being joined by justice deepak gupta former supreme court judge i'm going to begin with you justice gupta the audio and the chat details that has been released by the cops highlights that disha knew the consequences of her action that is the reason why this whatsapp group was also deleted after the toolkit was shared you have said sir that every citizen of this country have the right to oppose the government so la- long as the opposition is peaceful but many would say what happened on january 26th was hardly peaceful yeah January 26 what happened at the red fort was not peaceful what happened at many other places was peaceful also there were there were no riots at other places they did a march and everything what happened at the red fort was not peaceful it was not i i don't support it at all and nobody in his right mind can support what happened but what is the evidence to link this lady with what happened at uh, the red fort as of now what has been put on the public domain nothing links her now it's also very you know the police is giving whatsapp uh, you know the screenshots of whatsapp to uh, the media selectively are they giving all the whatsapp or are they giving only few uh, screenshots we don't know what is the entire material 
because i have found this a very dangerous trend in the last four uh, year or so especially from riya chakravarti's case that the police leak some selective uh, uh, material which they have collected to the media hmm. and then they try to hang them and what has come on that that greta thunberg and this lady are exchanging some whatsapp messages and she says i'm scared they might put uap against is that it does she say that i am asking for sedition or violence she says i am scared that they might put uapa against her and well she her fears have been found uh, were not ill founded because now she has been charged with sedition hmm. and just as gupta there is also the age argument uh, that is being made that disha ravi is quite young that charges under sedition law should have been added only after due investigation into her role do you agree with that assessment no no i am not uh, if uh, i don't agree 21 if if a person has committed a crime whether 21 18 once you're above that age you face the consequences i am not in uh, that that makes no difference for me whether it is a 50 year old person or a 21 year person if a crime has been committed whether it is sedition or but for me the very basis of sedition the element of sedition is missing in this case and it is not only in this case i find that police is in a hurry to arrest a lot of young people why i am saying now i am coming to this they they are in a hurry to uh, because hmm. they want to in my opinion they want to stifle dissent because youngsters are the one who are idealistic who you know there is a element of idealism at that age and they want to do something this lady was doing a lot of good work for hmm. environmental reasons i not if she done something wrong she will face the consequences but arresting somebody is not the first step arrest should be hmm. a later step i'm not talking only of this case but most cases arrest in a civilized society unfortunately in india it is not done and i that's why i'm saying i'm not making this statement because in india two thirds of the person behind bars are under trials which should not be there they should all be allowed to go on bail because when these people are if this girl uh, what's her name dia uh, uh, disha disha rabi supposing she there's a presumption of innocence at this stage supposing she is acquitted after 6 months a year two years who will bring back her 5 days 7 days or 10 days or months or two months which she sent in jail who will bring back her reputation which has been tarnished all over that she's a anti nationalist not patriotic i mean that's something which we need to look at in greater detail do we just arrest everybody at a drop of a hat i don't think so all right just as gupta appreciate your time thank you so much let me bring in nupur now nupur a uh, poetic justice foundation has links with pro khalistani activists but is it a band outfit how are those who are part of this zoom chat supposed to know that they are part of this zoom chat which also has members of this group which is planning that uh, the larger uh, you know role against india my question is the point being made by justice gupta there you are innocent until proven guilty here is there presumption that they are guilty and they have to now prove their innocence well good evening barya to you to all panelists uh, and to also your viewers uh point number 1 no uapa does not require an outfit to be banned for it to be implemented let's have that clear uh i think it would be actually extremely silly for us to pass a legislation only if an outfit is banned can it actually indulge in any terrorist or so uh, or a related activity no that's not how the law works especially uapa hmm. secondly uh i don't know how to take this because justice gupta at one end said that i don't have all the evidences in front of me i don't know what is there uh what are the investigations leading to yet to say that uh, dissent is being stifled yet to say that you know her image has been tarnished you yourself said that poetic justice foundation and modhaliwal behind it hmm. openly are uh, openly supporting the khalistani cause hmm. so that much is enough that is something that is anyway a, a banned thought in india the outfit might not be but the thought itself it took down one of us sitting prime ministers we cannot decry that point number 2 what perhaps uh, you know happened uh, maybe mr justice uh, well, mr gupta did not actually read through the toolkit there are three things uh that uh, the toolkit referred to fridays for future and that itself uh referred to three things one was there was a genocide is that not an incitement to uh, any kind of uh, 
you know, uh, physical violence. There was no genocide during the anti-farm law protest. Point number two, the uh, no, Friday, uh, since Friday you understand also, law, the point yeah. being made here is also of mens rea. Where is that? Because in criminal trials, guilty mind is important. And on that note, I'll bring in uh, Sanjay Hegde. Can I just answer that? Yes. Can I just answer that? Yes. Can you actually decry that? So the, you need to understand the FIR is not against the toolkit. The toolkit is one of the bases upon which an FIR against nobody, unnamed, was filed. And perhaps what has happened is you have to agree that Disha Ravi herself has accepted that she edited this. What was she doing in the company of Poetic Justice Foundation members? Point number one. Point number okay. two, the toolkit actually does say physical call to action on January 26th and a crime happened on January 26th. Okay. Sanjay, agree? Nobody is denying that. Yes. While I'll talk about the operation and, and, and you know, the question being raised about the proced procedural lapses in just a bit. Sanjay Hegri, the point being made by Nupur here. Go ahead. Sir, your audio. Sir, have you muted your, the audio? You'll have to unmute it. Okay, we'll try and fix that. Vikram uh, uh, Singh, respond to this point being made by uh, Nupur, particularly with regards to the toolkit, which was perhaps very clear about the intent. So anybody who is the editor of that toolkit knew about what will unfold if this toolkit is disseminated. Very true, Maria. One would naturally expect as an investigator that if you are an environmentalist, you would be more con concerned about the ecosystem, the biotic and the abiotic components the pollutants and what the global warming and issues like these. Farmers' agitation may occupy your fancy, but there are three disconcerting questions. One, what were the compulsions of hobnobbing with the likes of Mudhaliwal, Peter Friedrich, hmm. and Bhagwan Singh Pinder, a known terrorist and alias Iqbal Chaudhary, a known operative of the ISI. This is where the discomfort level comes and it is for the investigating agencies to find out what is the nexus between these two. On the face of it, the menstrual seems to be very much there because when she says, I could be booked under the UAPA, and therefore she was fully aware of the consequences in what she was doing. Hmm. And to hobnob with the likes of Mod Haliwal, Bhagwan Singh Binder, Peter Friedrich, also goes to show that the deeper nexus and the the possible, con I would not say a conspiracy, but a possible nexus between the undesirable elements and maybe okay. these youngsters who are possibly trying to raise a Twitter storm and I would not conform to the allegations of psychological warfare, hmm. but certainly Twitter storm was very much there in the offing and that was on the cards. And this is where the problem arises, Maria, and the investigators will have to investigate what is the deeper conspiracy. Yes, while we look at the deeper conspiracy, Shama, the point being made also of the role of the civil society and politicians as well. The fact that pro Khalistan groups are actively seeking to leverage the current farm protests is no secret, which makes it very important for the civil society and politicians as well to maintain their distinct identity and their position on the issues. They uh, have Maria, to be cautious. This Khalistani involvement is something which Mr. K.K. Venugopal has said to the Supreme Court. That's right. My question is, why is Mr. Amit Shah, being the Home Minister, not arresting these Khalistanis? Day one, when this protest started in December, we have been hearing urban Naxals, we have been hearing Khalistanis, we have been hearing anti-nationals from senior BJP leaders, including Piyush Goel, Nirmala Sitaraman, and the rest. My question is, even Manohar Lal Khattar, my question is, we, they say they have a home minister which is capable, who is wonderful and fantastic in uh, Gujarat. Why is he not arresting the Khalistanis? Why are we hearing continuously this Khalistanis? Let us look at the bigger picture here. Now, for example, this girl, Disha Ravi, there are many loopholes in this. When the police arrested her in the Delhi police arrested her in Bangalore, there was not a transit remand. Yes, in we'll talk about conference. the procedural Mr. lapses in just a bit, Shama. My specific point is when it's a very, very volatile situation and if you are part of some information dissemination in this situation, shouldn't those individuals also understand the ramification of their actions? Here no, is, I, yes, the I, point I, being I, made by Vikram Singh, that age cannot be an me, argument first. Second, 
if you are an author of a toolkit of which the content shows that you are privy to certain information which could be could lead to a situation that played out on 26 very very unfortunate then you have to bear the consequences of your action so for that let me answer this I do not trust the Delhi police. This is the Delhi police who watched Komal Sharma beat up people but did not arrest her. This is the Delhi police when Kapil Mishra said in front of the D, uh, DGP that if you do not clear Jafrabad in three days, then I don't know what I will do. You cannot, I, I will do whatever I want. So when uh, these things have happened, Amit Malviya during when the riot is happening, he says, Chun chun ke hinduon ke ghar ko jalaya gaya hai. Is this protest against CA or was it against Hindus? I mean, isn't that incitement of violence? Parvesh Varma, when their own MP, no, when we are the, talking uh, about the, this uh, issue, Shama. It, it, when the protest, I'll take a quick response from Nupur on this. Nupur, because yeah, it's a political I'll argument, you'll have to respond to this, and then I'll bring in Sanjay Hegel. Well, uh, the fact is, we are not actually discussing the Delhi riots, but we are discussing the farm protests. Uh, well, when you do question, you have to allow me to answer. You know, I don't want to be heckled. I have heard her clearly. You asked me to come in, and you have to handle it, Maria. Please. Go ahead. You have to please handle it. When you know her argument started by saying, you know, is his home minister, Mr. Amit Shah, such a weak home minister? Why isn't he taking action? Well, I clearly remember 45 odd people. Uh, on on the uh, allegation of being pro Khalistani and Khalistani infestation into these anti farm laws protests was sent NIA summons. Mr. Randeep Surjewala, the head of the media cell of the IT, was the first one to jump the bandwagon and say that uh, we are not going to get covered down by the NIA summons. What are these NIA summons? He absolutely rubbish them. So I don't know. I please clear your stand within the party. What are you for? Were you for the NIA summons and investigation into Khalistani Nek or not? Hmm. Point number two. Hmm. Please allow me to complete. Yes, Point go ahead quickly. Two, hmm. uh, you know, fact is, uh, simply put, from the Congress ranks itself, from Captain Amrinder Singh to your All India Congress Committee, Kisan Congress Joint Convener, Mr. Gursimran Singh Man, to your Ludhiana MP, uh, Ravinder Singh Bittu, all have gone on record to say that Khalistani infestation has happened. Point number three, you know, as far as transit remand is concerned, where the permission is more than seven years, transit remand is not necessary. It is not mandatory for the Delhi police to follow it. Point number four, uh, you say that, you know, the, the, it's the insightful, you know, the hate speech. The, what was Sonia Gandhi doing during Delhi Rights saying, Arya Parki Ladai or Rahul Gandhi two days okay. after January 26th Fine. saying, Fine. Desh Fine. Fine. Sanjay Hegre now, please. Sanjay Hegre, the point being made about procedural lapses. And at the same time, the fact that Shantanu, who's one of the three alleged conspirator, being granted anticipatory bail. Uh, is the Delhi police really in a position to build a watertight case? Are you seeing... Can, and can this be about dissent leading to conspiracy or is this an overreaction of the state? Some kind of paranoia? It's an obvious overreaction and it's more than an overreaction. You spoke about uh, the WhatsApp exchange about UAPA. When did that happen? That happened when the Delhi police first got this organization in their sight and uh, decided to uh, uh, invoke the UAPA. There was, there was an outcry, and then it was said, no, 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 they, that was a mistake. Uh, uh, this was in July 2020, when there were protests against the um, EIA notification being varied. So uh, please take every fact in its chronological uh, format. Chronology samajhiye. In July, you did, you did not go, you could not go after this organization. So you got another opportunity here. Hmm. Now, what has happened? There, there is a toolkit. What does the toolkit say? The toolkit says, okay, this is what we shall protest about. They, around the 26th, we shall have a Twitter storm, etc., etc. They People say that uh, the Delhi police have now leaked out, contrary to the Delhi High Court judgment, which says that thou shalt not leak, thou shalt not plant evidence in the media, thou shalt not try cases in the media. Despite that, the Delhi police have gone back to their standard modus operandi, and let us see what they leaked out. They have leaked out the fact that there was a particular Zoom call. Now, on a Zoom call, on a Zoom chat, I, I address so many webinars. How do I know who is there and what is his organization? What is it behind? Let, let's wait for, 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 for uh, details to again emerge in a proper chat sheet after investigation. Right now, all that exists is a toolkit which says, how do we, how do we uh, uh, amplify the protests on social media? Hmm. 
there is nothing which is an incitement to violence. And as far as sedition is concerned, let me remind the Delhi police of the case of Balbir Singh, where two Sikh gentlemen on the day of Indira Gandhi's assassination uh, raised huge slogans of a much worse kind in Chandigarh, and the Supreme Court still acquitted both of them, saying that they were not responsible for any of the violence. Okay. There is no causal link between the violence which happens in Delhi on 26th and whatever uh, uh, okay. Disha and Greta Thunberg discussed over WhatsApp or wherever else. Okay. The point, uh, organi yes. Organizing in, uh, uh, protests is not unlawful. Okay. And there is nothing called thought crime. Okay. Vikram Singh will respond. With the, on the basis, on the basis yes. of the evidence that is there in the public domain, can there be a direct evidence or a direct link between this toolkit and what really happened on 26th? On the face of it, Maria, a specific question, a specific answer. On the face of it, there is no direct evidence as of now. It has to be an incisive investigation to prove that there is a link between this and the violence there. Hmm. And also what Mr. Sanjay Hegre has said and Justice Gupta also said, it is not in our interest as a professional police force to make selective leakages. If I am professional and confident of my homework, I will make ensure that no leakages are made. It is a, a, a reflection on my professional competence if leakages are made. Coming as it does from a retired Supreme Court judge, I do hope that the Delhi police is listening and do and take whatever precautions are necessary. Hmm. But on the face of it, Maria, there is no direct linkage as on there are only allegations which have to be investigated and a possibility that the various pieces of jigsaw puzzle will have to be pieced it together. Hmm. Let us all retain our sanity. Let us not jump to conclusions before time. Absolutely. And there is always a possibility because the investigators could be privy to much more information than what is there in the public domain. Lupo Sharma. Can I come in, Maria? I need to retort to her. You know, uh, you know, uh, Maria. Simply put, Maria, as far as retort, as far as leakage, selective there. leakages are concerned, hmm. as far as selective leakages are concerned, it is absolutely the domain and the mandate and the discretion of the honourable courts to pull up the Delhi police for what they have done or not done. Hmm. But when we speak about one UAPA message, two all mess two more messages have actually leaked out. One which says uh, tells Greta to delete the toolkit. What was the uh, necessity? And two. A, a fact which has been recorded, and I would say it's something recorded by the uh, order which uh, sent her to police remand, which is that she deleted her WhatsApp group and chat. Why? And secondly, as a lawyer, Nikita Jacob should not have been absconding. What is there to hide? As a lawyer, she should know that actually does not actually uh, reflect very okay. nice on her. 30 seconds behavior. to you, Shama, and then I'll give the final words to Sanjay Hegde. Yeah, I need some time, please. One, is she said the NIS summons of the, uh, why we had NIS summons against Khalistani. Summons for Khalistani terrorists, but no summons for this girl. You just go and arrest her. And what I was going to say is when they arrested the IT cell commissioner, who IT cell police commissioner, who he said in a press conference, her mother, the uh, a lady officer was there and SHO was there. The Bangalore police of the Bhatia Janata Party clearly says that there was just a judicial person and nobody else and also the magistrate in delhi what why did she uh, give her to police custody without counsel what has happened to our judges is the question we need to think okay. and the I other thing we should be uh, pointing fingers at our judiciary yes. that is unfair and the, okay. i'm sorry i don't, don't think we should be pointing and fingers at our judiciary that's actually unfair sanjay agre sanjay agre on the screen now please. Please. mr agre if judges don't do their work they will be subject to public comment hmm. public comment is not contempt and the magistracy is the first line of defense okay, for the citizens. Not a person if the magistracy does not, not follow the, the checklist, which is being given by the Supreme the Court, court then the obviously there are questions question that will be asked. Having, say, having said that, please do not interrupt. Yes, Sanjay Hegre's audio, please only. Yes, Mr. Hegre. See, having said all that, the real question is, what was the tearing hurry to arrest a 21-year-old girl over a weekend, not produce her before a magistrate in Bangalore, bring her to Delhi, and then produce her uh, without the aid of counsel? There is a pattern to it. People uh, are... Uh, uh, ordinary people perceive the pattern. And uh, I, the last line is, I'm reminded of an old song which says, that is the impression. All right. Sanjay Hegde, thank you so much for joining us. Vikram Singh, Nupur Sharma, Shama Mohammed, and Justice Gupta, thank you so much for your time on News Epicenter.
That's all from me. Thanks so much for watching this entire debate on news18.com and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.